watch here, obviously mm -hmm. because of Hurricane Igor, Kim McDonald, Chris Murphy. We're joined by Shelley Steves as well, who is in St. John's, Newfoundland, flew in last night, yeah. a, a pretty hairy flight, as she would say, and no surprise, there is a hurricane and it's moving very close to Newfoundland this hour. Yeah, you want, it's a day to make sure your pets are inside, the batteries are close at hand. Uh, Shelley, you're joining us right now. Uh, what, what's it like, current conditions? We're seeing bouts of really heavy rainfall, a little bit of a lull right now, but at times it's coming down very hard and very heavy. And we're starting to see some water pool on the roadways as well. And actually, we're just speaking not too long ago with uh, someone from uh, the city here in St. John's who's saying flooding is really their major concern with this, and we're already starting to see that. I know they've done a lot of updates when it comes to city planning since uh, Chantel and uh, because of the flooding then. Now, I know they're hoping for the best, Shelley. Uh, any word from the, uh, from the city this morning about what they expect or anticipate? Well, they're definitely um, anticipating some flooding with this particular storm, and that's why they're asking people that, uh, you know, watch out for pools of water on the road. If you can stay off the roads, by all means, do so. Um, and also saying, have emergency supplies on hand as well. Be prepared for potential flooding. And also, as the storm progresses into the afternoon and we start to see those high winds and strong winds as well, be ready for power outages too. Now, Shelley, uh, from the people that you've been talking to, is there any sense of concern or is this, you know, just a, another stormy day in St. John's? Yeah, Chris, I was speaking with several people this morning and there does seem to be some concern with this particular storm. We're not used to getting this kind of uh, degree of a storm this early in the season. Of course in this area they're accustomed to, to winter storms, but this early in September I was speaking with a gentleman just a few minutes ago He said he can't remember the last time that schools were cancelled in September for a storm of this magnitude. So there is some, uh, some concern in the community. People are getting ready. Uh, they seem to be more concerned about the heavy rainfall because some areas could see as much as 200 mils of rain, which could, of course, as you spoke about, lead to flooding. And that seems to be the real concern right now. Thank you, Shelley. We'll, uh, we'll get back to you in moments. Shelley Steves reporting live from downtown St. John's, Newfoundland. And by the way, worst case scenario, people are forced from their homes mm -hmm. because of flooding. If that dangerous situation does happen to happen, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Cross is there. They will be opening up emergency shelters for folks who need to get out of their homes and into some place safe. All right, let's uh, show you a satellite and then a radar of this storm. It is still a Category 1 hurricane. It's moving rapidly. It's located currently about 350 kilometers south of Cape Race, Newfoundland. Uh, it is not expected to make landfall, but because it is such a large storm, and of course we've already seen uh, the heavy rain occurring even as far west as northwestern areas of Newfoundland, and that heavy rain, and there's been some embedded thunderstorms in the Avalon pushing towards the Bonavista. I know there, uh, there may be some people who want to get a closer look at this storm, who want to go to the mm -hmm. ocean and see the power of this storm. Obviously, it's not advised. Uh, there have been waves already 10 meters high offshore. Absolutely. Meanwhile, in Ontario, we've got thunderstorms from Georgian Bay to Lake Simcoe and northwards through North Bay and Timmins, and the cold front is slipping southwards today.